sometimes I feel overwhelmed by like how much I still have to learn. Same thing. Like more yeah. I learn, I'm so more like a more I talk, more I learn, and I feel how little I know about the guitar and music. This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Get access to my streaming video service Nebula when you sign up for Curiosity Stream using the link in the description. Guitar motivation. If you've been playing for, well, so if you started teaching 27, 28 years ago. 28 years ago, yeah. How long have you been playing? What age did you begin? 11? 13. 13. It's really, you know, I really started 12, but the one year I really couldn't not play anything. So that, you know, that's why I don't count. Really, I stopped playing chords or something. It's really when I was 13. Well, that's so interesting. I'm, so for yeah. your first year of playing, you couldn't really play anything. That's quite inspirational for people who've picked up the guitar in the last year and they might be feeling like they have no progress. Yeah. Or, or they might be feeling the same difficulties where they, they have the wrong guitar, they, they don't know which one to buy. First, first, like, you know, a thing I want to tell you, if you cannot play anything or if you cannot improve anything within one year, just don't worry about it. Because that's more like, you know, tryout time and just see how much you can really passion about keep doing it. Yeah. So to me, it's not about how long you have been playing or how fast you can play or how fast you learn. It just never quit. That's the key. You never quit, no matter what. So yeah. no matter what, first year I couldn't play. I listened Deeper Purple. I, I want to play like that. I couldn't play, yeah. you know? So, and but just keep listening. So I think I increase more listening phase like listening a lot of Beatles, you know, Jeff Beck and that, Led Zeppelin. So almost like I hear music, but I don't know how to play. Then yeah. somebody show me. First chord ever I learned is uh, this one, like an E minor. Yeah. Then, like that. I didn't know that's an E minor. <laughs> so that was the first thing. Yeah. Then somebody show me C, then I learn C, like this, yeah. like this. Oh, wow, okay. Right. Yeah, so that's yeah. like, a, you know, how about fifth in it? So not this. So this was Over C. Two. Yeah. And then high school, when I was like, you know, maybe 13, end of 13, one person who played bluegrass, I have no idea, but, uh, you know, the, <laughs> like that and then i have no idea about music like that he showed me you have to play really fast yeah yeah so that was exercise almost. did you play <laughs> did you um did you play any of the musical instruments before you picked up the guitar yes harmonica harmonica yeah so this, this is really funny <laughs> um my parents put me into um kindergarten but a little bit more like a private kindergarten, not just regular kindergarten. In the kindergarten, they have a built-in after-school program type of thing with music. So everybody play marimba or a castanet or something. It's almost like a, a lot of music program in it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, I picked harmonica. And after... I finished, you know, kindergarten still when I was maybe 12, 11 or 12, still I was taking lessons as a play harmonica. Right. So every uh, year, once a year, we have a um, recital. So I remember I go up on stage and play the song. You did a harmonica recital? Yes, I did. That's amazing. <laughs> That's I'm, so I'm, awesome. Thank you for asking me other instruments. I almost forgot about that always i forgot oh yeah i was doing that you know well okay so the first year you didn't learn anything but then right. you must have started progressing yeah now you've been teaching for 27 years and you've been playing since you were 13 yeah how have you remained motivated yeah that's more actually one of the most asked question guitar is to me just thinking about looking at it's just so exciting mm. so never ever ever felt not having any 
um, motivation. So that's like, I can answer to you because I don't lose any motivation about the guitar because guitar made me, made me. Up to, you know, 13 years old, you know, I wasn't really into anything. I do the karate too, but I wasn't really into. So at one point I feel a little bit depressed, you know, like, you know, just like a normal person, depressed about not having fun, mm -hmm. not having my uh, direction, not having structure. But then once I see the guitar, once I, you know, found that fire in the guitar and just everything about the guitar. I mean, even my wife, kids make fun of me about guitar. Yeah. Because we have a dinner. Sometimes I'm kind of thinking like this, you know, eating and everybody talking. I'm not talking because I'm thinking something and that they can tell. Yeah. This is what my wife, my daughter does. <laughs> guitar. <laughs> go, ah, 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 ah. What, what are you talking about? You know, that's like a family joke, you know, because if they say guitar, I go, what, 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 you know, like. <laughs> That's really, it's all over guitar. Sometimes I feel overwhelmed by like how much I still have to learn. Same thing. Like more yeah. I learn, so more like more I talk, more I learn. And I feel how little I know about the guitar and music. So yeah. that motivation to me, it runs more than a year or more. In other words, oh, wow, I still not master this instrument. So yeah. honestly, guitar is guitar can really make me so humble and pure and to become very um, patient. What I'm what I'm trying to practice at the moment is um, is getting back to calm playing so that when mm -hmm. I start playing in front of people again, mm -hmm. I'm just calm and collected and yeah. can get my hands moving because i always yeah. think that that's the thing it doesn't matter how well you can play alone yeah but if you aren't thinking calm thoughts and like um yeah tempering your i know nerves. what you're saying yeah even even my experience you know if i go on a stage i get a little nervous naturally yeah shake shaking a little bit and then you know, few notes I play, and then right away I'm I'm good. But then you know, I wish I can be much more calm, much more calm, anywhere else when mm -hmm. I'm on stage, and then try to pull out naturally everything I got. I'm doing a lot of That's practice a... with a click track, especially like playing songs to click track and just recording mm -hmm. them in one take, just so that mm -hmm. I can yeah. remember what that feels like, just to get. You know, just have that pacing and just be calm, collected. Make sure you don't yeah. just fluff everything yeah. and rush through everything. So I'm like, the only thing that I really want to do up on stage is is sing and perform the songs that I've already written and rehearsed. Mm -hmm. I will do like a little amount of improv for a solo, mm -hmm. whatever. But really, I want to be so rehearsed that it just comes naturally, and I can. I don't want to. I mean, myself be... too. Like you know, some of the you know things I play, blues or funky stuff. I have to improvise and I want to improvise, but at the same time, I I like to play a little bit more well rehearsed and <laughs> tell you the truth. I mean, a lot of gigs that I did, I don't really rehearse or I don't practice the song. I just play, you know, on the stage and more improvise. That's why in a way I have a really good focus when I play because mm -hmm. that's only one chance. And then, of yeah. course, I hit the wrong note. I hit the wrong thing. But then I work on how to recover from wrong things to make more right, you know. But still, it's a little bit shaky sometimes because I could play a little bit more better in sort of short time because sometimes it doesn't come out right. Then improvisation music is a little bit not great about, you know, play as a form because then you extend the form ended up you know that song you know nine minutes like it happened to me a lot if i play isn't she w i could play seven eight minutes yeah. but i love to play about four minutes or mm -hmm. three minutes in order to do that i want to make sure first chorus second chorus around something i want to play but then maybe i can improvise slightly maybe 10 percent but 
mostly I want to do most written, just like a、um, Tommy Emmanuel.、Mm-hmm. That way, when I do tour, more consistent every night. So going back to the guitar motivation thing and、yes. wrapping wrapping up the topic, it's yeah. like, yeah, I think it's whatever you want to do with the instrument, whatever that is, that has to remain the motivation, not necessarily just. Being the best player in the world because that right, that will right, right. get you so no, far. No, no, no. It's not. It, it's it's you know. I mean, like you said, it's really about you and music and guitar. So not necessary to be number one or how fast or how how difficult to play. So you set your goal as you wish. Yeah. Even just you know two chords, melody, you know few songs. I think that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And worst worst thing is like you know almost you just set up the you know goals that it's a little too far away. Yeah. Then that become a little bit disappointing. You know. To me, if you look at the guitar, you know, different in the direction, but so many possibility of、um, motivation.、Mm-hmm. But same time, a lot of possibility of distraction. You know. Kind of funny, but yeah. But、uh, you know, to me, yeah, it's always so motivated. Motivations a lot in the guitar. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned Nebula, my amazing streaming platform, which is where I'm hosting exclusive and ad-free videos alongside other YouTube creators you might recognize. Let me just show you what my channel looks like as I upload extended versions of my Tuesday talks, interviews, as they can be pretty long and in depth, and that wouldn't quite work on YouTube. So you can see my conversations with Corey Wong, Tommy Fujita, Molly Tuttle, and Josh Turner. Then I've made Nebula exclusive videos. My most recent being the behind the scenes of the Cabin Fever EP, which, if you haven't checked it out, is a rather light-hearted and fun 25-minute vlog with acoustic performances of three original tunes plus so much more. There's a lot to dive into over on my Nebula channel. The best way to access Nebula is to sign up to a subscription for Curiosity Stream. Who are very kindly sponsoring this video. If you aren't already aware, Curiosity Stream is the best place on the internet to see thousands of the world's finest documentaries and non-fiction titles. It is the biggest documentary streaming subscription platform, founded by John Hendricks, who also founded the Discovery Channel. My documentary pick is Classical Destinations, in which Simon Callow travels the world, discovering how great masterpieces were made. He drifts through Italy, France, Russia, and even focuses on Edward Elgar, one of my favourite British composers. If you need a very soothing show, I recommend this one. We worked out a deal that if you sign up for Curiosity Stream with the link in the description, you'll also get a Nebula subscription for free. And just to give you a little more information, that Nebula subscription isn't a trial. It's free for as long as you're a Curiosity Stream member. Once you use the link or code Mary Spender, you'll get a welcome email from Nebula giving you access. For a limited time only, Curiosity Stream is offering 26% off their annual plans, which is less than $15 a year for Curiosity Stream and Nebula, which is a pretty amazing bundle. So, if you click on the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com/maryspender, it helps me and my fellow creators keep on doing what we're doing. It really helps more than you know.